No one? Even for those who've done a few only? No? Okay. Alright, so I think the most important thing, you know, when you encounter PCR, don't be discouraged. Right? First thing you need to do is to recognize it early. If you recognize PCR early, you don't run into the severe complications like bridges loss. You can avoid that, you can even avoid a drop nucleus, right? Or a drop fragment. So it's very important that you recognize the signs. The next thing to do is, right, you, you're panicking, your hands are start to shake, right? But you must remember, before you pull out instruments, inject the specific OBD into the anterior chamber, something like the scope, to stabilize the anterior chamber and the fragment. That will prevent enlargement of the PCR and bridges coming forwards. Okay? Then, the next thing you want to do is to move any remnant fragments into this dispersive OBD trap. It's important that it's dispersive. Okay? So that even if part of that dispersive OBD was removed by a vitrectomy, the fragment doesn't come along and fall back through the PCR. Okay? Because there's a dispersive OBD that forms a trap for the nucleus in the anterior chamber and keeps it there so that you can clear the bridges if there's any. And then you think about it and you plan your approach to management of the remnant nucleus, the cortex, the bridges, and how you can place the RR safely. Okay. Watch the signs, okay? Okay, so we're having a very soft nucleus. Look here. Still seems okay. And then can you see something fluttering at the back here? Look at this fragment. After a while, it jiggles. And then what, what do you see? All oh, the fluttering and the fragment has disappeared. And this gap is widening and it's extremely clear. Look, did you see that then fly back to the back of that? Through this hole? Okay, that's already late when you drop a small fragment. Now, of course, no one expects it so early in the case, right? You're just beginning your case. It usually happens towards the end of the go dealing with your last fragment. But this obviously went right through. Okay, so at first you saw a bit of fluttering. Things look a bit tremulous there. Right? Then you saw a nice clearing. And then you see that we try to fickle things like don't want to do what you expected to do. And next thing you see things blowing through that hole because of the pressurized anterior chamber. Have a look at this case. <clears throat> okay, again, this is soft cataract. Okay, watch the fluttering, okay? That's going to happen. So the surgeon is going right through. Okay. Did you see the fluttering? Okay, the PC is probably gone already with that prank. Surgeon still can rotate the nucleus. <clears throat> Did you see that bounce? Definitely the PC has been fickle. <clears throat> if then the surgeon realizes something has happened there. But you see all the signs, alright? It's, it's bouncing. When you prank a capsule, you get a sudden bounce and then it flutters. Okay? So nothing has dropped here yet, but you need to recognize it early. Watch this one. This one's very scary. If something's happening on this side. Things are like floating, not moving around in a... Okay, what's happening now? I can tell you bridges has been caught and the surgeon knows that. He's trying to remove the bridges. But did you see that? I'll show you again. Huh? Okay, watch here. Things are floating. You see, let, let this fragment. It's floating. It's not normal. And that's when the bridges got caught. Okay? And the sentence continues. And then next thing, if you continue further, it will drop. And actually, this fragment started to drop. Okay? So, so you saw the sudden movement with the fragment that was when the bridges got caught by the probe. Okay, this is another snap sign. Just watch. Did you see that? Okay, I'll show you this a little later again when I show you what our L placement like. So I didn't think anything of it. I proceeded. 
I kind of found that it didn't really rotate well. I managed to rotate it by after impaling it. I'm continuing the finger, and then it, it's just not right. It's tilting. Can you see it's tilting? The whole nucleus is tilting. And this was kind of a strange cataract in a youngish patient. It was a lawyer. Okay, so that's how I mobilized it into the OBD trap. And then I proceeded to move the nucleus and there was one drop fragment. So that's when I got my PR calling in. But I'll show you the rest of this video later, how I placed the RR. Okay? But you saw that severe people snap sign. So sometimes it doesn't drop like what Ron showed earlier, you know. It, it's just obvious, but then you say nothing happened. Then you continue the vehicle, but I knew it was just not normal. Okay, so you just need to be very careful to decide to continue because you don't believe your eyes, right? <clears throat> okay, so what happens when you have a PCR that's occurred and it's early, you've recognized it, we want to minimize its extension. Okay, so just watch this, the last fragment. <coughs> and actually it was quite unfair, you know, because I put in this code even and uh, I still had a, just the PC came up and I, I created a little hole there to try to remove the very, very last fragment. Okay, so there was a strand of edges attached to it. I just cut that and I've got this tag here. Okay, so what you want to do is where possible, if you can still see the radial edge tearing up, you want to round it off with a little slight maneuver put in centrally, okay? Even if it goes quite far out and you can still see it, it's still worth rounding it off because it means that when you place your RL, right, you don't have to worry about extension of this. You can still place your lens into the capsular bag. Okay? You can see this lens unfolds very slowly, gently. And you can still have time to maneuver it into the bag. <coughs> so I was telling some of the doctors yesterday that you don't always have to dial a lens in. Alright, you can place it in. So the important thing is that if you get your optic into the posterior position, you let go, you have to go drop into the bag. You don't have to dial it in. Okay, let's see this other case. Most of my PCRs occur with the posterior polar, like you can see here. Okay. You see this remnant of the polar cataract here still. We were always stripping from peripheral towards the center and we do it last because that's the weakest point of the posterior polar cataract. Sometimes there's a pre-existing rip already. You can see even the air bubble has gone behind. Okay, but it's still attached here centrally. This is attached wrong, this is the one attached by a strand of edges. Okay, that's why it didn't come along. You can see the strand of edges through this break in the posterior capsule. Right? As you can see the strand of edges here. So I'm just going to round this off. So you catch the leading edge and you do a little maneuver and then you have a nice round hole. Okay? That's the posterior polar cataract with a strand of vitreous attached to it. And in such cases, because you have done a PCCC, posterior capsorexis, continuous capsorexis, you can still even remove viscoelastic from underneath, right? It doesn't extend, you can manipulate, do whatever you need to, very safely. Just don't dip your IA tip into that hole, okay? You saw the scope there. And then you can press one and you see it just does not extend and it's beautiful. The patient won't need again. Okay? But don't do that as a routine. <clears throat> so I think it's more difficult when you have um, a PCR earlier on when you have nuclear fragments. How do we manage these fragments? We can just go displace it if it's just one or two fragments. We can use a pediatric factice, which if it's a small fragment or a moderate size fragment. We can use a sheet slab, right, which is used for introduction of anterior chamber lens, right, and then you can fake over it, so that forms like a, 
scaffold or instead of introducing a sheet slide, if you're certain about the RL that you're going to use, you're going to use a three piece because you're sure the PC is gone, you can't use the bag, then you can insert a three piece lens to act as a scaffold. You can put this in the anterior chamber, you can put it in the sulcus, you can put it in the bag. You can even, like what Amar Agawal does, he's, he glues lens and lets it act as a scaffold. And then you flip all your fragments over it. Okay? And of course, if you're small fragments, you can just use an anterior projector. I cannot remember what this case is about, but I think this was the hydro rupture. The one that ran through. Yeah. Okay, so this is the pupil step sign you saw. Second time because uh, my trainee didn't believe it. And it's trying to see whether it rocks. Yes, it rocks. Okay, and then it starts to tilt, right? You can see the equator and everything starts to sink. Okay, and of course, whole nucleus is going down. And then he says, maybe let's try and push it down. But some of this elastic. Because we always say, oh, put in the scope, put in the scope. So the next thing you do is put in the scope. So that's not the right thing. So as mentioned earlier, this was a 20 gauge. We shouldn't be using that. 25 gauge, 1 inch. Needle would be better. Okay, this is going in 3.5 mm posteriorly. Okay, you pin on the lens and then bring it up. Okay. So we're trying to support it and then we lift it up with the back this and deliver this. Okay. At least we didn't drop the whole unit. Right? So this is when it drops really very early and you have the entire nucleus, you probably have to use effectors, otherwise it's difficult. Right? Let's have this other one that you saw, saw the first part of earlier when I showed you signs of PCR. This is late PCR already. When you have the fragment floating here and then it gets caught with the pictures, maybe invisible but you can see the signs. And then if continue your vehicle because you're catching more pictures, right? You're sucking the pictures. Obviously, it disrupts the rest of the PC here that's supporting the fragment, and the fragment looks like it's disappearing. But the surgeon is continuing. This is what you should not do, okay? You have nothing here, just pictures. Don't continue to fickle, mm. right? You should not do this. This is more like 15 years ago. And of course, it starts to disappear. And the surgeon says, I, I want it, I want it, I want it, you're just there. Wait, wait for me. Ah, ah, I'm coming. <laughs> of course you can't because there's witches in between. So we take another needle there. I was called to help. Okay. And we try and levitate. Okay. You can load it on this scope so that you can float it up to the iris plane. Right? You can see it being injected, and once that's levitated, you then remove it by whatever means you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what dropping fragment is what you can do if you get out of practice or whatever you want to do. Okay, let's have a look at this other one. <coughs> we showed you this earlier. Oh no, we didn't show you this one. Okay, anyway, it's gone right through here. It's a whole punch net. And of course, we recognize the bounds. There's a hole. Okay, so first thing we do is we patch up the hole, put in some dispersive viscoelastic so that nothing drops through. And I'm just going to clear, clear up some of the cortex there, just an aspiration with no infusion. We call that a mini IA that is um, designed by Graham Barrett. And I'm going to put the lens into the capsule bag. It was just a all nicely punched out that will not extend. But I still got so much nucleus, right? So most of you will stumble at how to remove this nucleus. It's difficult, right? So I'm just clearing the cortex from behind this nucleus. Fortunately, it's not a hard nucleus. Okay, so clean up the bag and fickle over the RL, right? You have to fickle a bit more anteriorly 
because you don't want to fake out the lens and cause scratches across the RL. Okay? So you can see in this case, you still have some incisional contacts, but you can still remove this slowly. Alright? And I'm going in with a mini IA on the side. You just dissociate your infusion from your aspiration. Right, very important, maintain the chamber until the very end. I put in my own step and hydrated the wounds before I came out. Okay? So you can do it in early stage and if it's a limited PC opening, if you need to, you can round it up. If not, you can just remove a bit of contact hair and ensure that it's complete. And you can put your lens in the bag. Okay, and then they go over the RL and get it as a scaffold. Okay, now we're going to have another case. It was not started by me, so I don't know what happened. I was just called. You can see this is a left-handed surgeon. And suddenly she runs into trouble. Something looks like it's dropped. Maybe, maybe not, but it's just very suspicious. So she's doing the right thing. You can see the hand is shaking now. Okay, put in this person the score last thing. And then come out. So I was called to help. I don't know what is happening. I wasn't there before. Okay, so we know we have got these fragments to remove. So they're coming up from the capsular bag. I use this mushroom, again designed by Graham Barrett. And uh, it's a blunt one, so you can put it into the capsule bag, mobilize the nuclear fragment, lift it up into the OBD trap. Okay, now I've got a space, a clearing, not much nucleus behind. I'm putting in the three piece RL. Okay, this is going to act as a scaffold, and because I was not there earlier, I didn't see exactly what the situation was behind. I don't know whether the lens can go into the capsule bag, so I'm not going to do all that. I'm just going to put the lens into the could be anterior chamber or sulcus, it doesn't matter. I know there's an anterior capsule there, but I'm not sure about the rest. So I'm just going to leave this training out here in case my lens starts to drop. Okay? So if you put the RL in the anterior chamber to act as a scaffold, you'll find that the chamber is shallower than if you put it in the back. So you need to really be slow with your parameters when you do the finkel because you're really quite near the cornea, you want to be gentle with the finkel you're respecting the epithelium okay, always before you come out put in this for last thing so now we have to make sure that even if there's vitreous, it's okay you can go behind the LL you can still see it reasonably well to clear vitreous alright Adding trypsinone that's diluted 50% will be even more helpful. But you'll see that there's also cortex here, so it's not an easy case. Because you need to have to, after clearing the chest, then I switch the cutting mode to aspiration mode and just use this as an IA. Okay, my infusion is always dissociated, it's coming in the anterior chamber so that things don't come forward, you push it to its backwards. And you can see this is just like a standard IA. But what I would suggest you do, instead of using a vitrectomy through the main port, is to create a separate port because the incisions should be snug so that you don't allow vitreous to leak from the back to the front of the eye. Okay? So you should just create or to do it from the side port. And you can see this is just a mini IA like what I used earlier, just to aspirate and the infusions come here. Clear more vitreous. But you can see that you can do really a good job, right? You can clear everything. It's important to clear all the contacts. And now I'm going to move the lens into the sulcus. Okay? And then you put some myelostat to close the pupil. As you just maneuver, you don't always have to dial, you dial something to go right through the PCR. So, you saw, I just used the Sinsky, flexed the haptic, and just levitated it just into the sulcus. Here you can control exactly the plane of, of dropping the haptic. Okay, let's have a look at this one. So, this is my training doing, and of course, it's the last fragment. You can see a PCR has occurred right there in the center, and this fragment is stuck to the vitreous. Okay, so this go last thing to push back the vitreous. Retract to me. As I said, today I will not go through the main incision. I will create a side port here. Okay, so this is being trapped in the OBD. And I don't want to remove the OBD because it will start to mobilize my 
liquor, so I told the liquor stay there. Okay, just let it there, it stays there. Okay, then you, this is in IA mode. See, I'm keeping that on this nuclear fragment. Okay, so you can clean up all the cortex and it's important so you don't have persistent inflammation and glaucoma. And my infusion is on, so I don't have to just put this code when I come out. This infusion is maintaining the chamber. And then we have this last fragment here. You could remove it with this code. Or you can just put the lens into the sulcus. Or in fact, if you wanted to even into the capsular bag with the single piece, would have been adequate support for it. So this is in the sulcus. Then you can do an optic capture. Okay, you have good centered rexis. Then you can put in the FACO and lower parameters. Just slowly remove this last fragment. And make sure that you keep the RL at the center. You see, I'm just staying over the center of RL so you don't aspirate any nutrients. You see the big hole here. Okay. I drink everything before you come out. Alright, so you can use an RL in the sulcus as a scaffold. If you look at this other case, this is a femto rib, right? Anterior rib. So, well, everything looked fine. <clears throat> Just starting the list this morning. <clears throat> so, hydro dissection, you saw the wave there. And then this one, I didn't see a wave, so I was like, not very happy. I was trying a few times and I realized for femto cases you can't inflate the back too much, okay? Things will give way. So this patient was squeezing, so there's more pressure again. I thought, okay, fine, let's carry on now. <coughs> crack. I don't know why I wanted to have a nice crack, so I cracked it, cracked it, cracked it. Then I have the next crack one coming. Look oh, fine, still no problem. <coughs> and then I see these lights here. Can you see the lights there? Just doesn't look right. But what did I do? I didn't do anything. I just started the case. But I knew it was not normal to have lines that are so straight. So now I have a whole nucleus to contend with. Okay, fortunately, it's been fragmented into eight pieces, so I can actually carve it the center. And I don't put in my RL. Right, I plan for a toric lens, but no way. Okay, so the lens is going in. I don't know where. It's a big nucleus here, right? A moderate density. But I'm glad that these haptics are blue. Okay, because I can see blue haptics. If I can see the blue haptic, it's not dropped. Can you see the blue haptic? So nice. Okay, it assures you that it's not gone through a PC opening because when you inject it, you really cannot see very well. Okay? So I had enlarged my incision. This was a 1.8 FACO, so. I have to be very, very careful when my vacuum has been lowish, right? My infusion has been high. You have to rebalance your fecal dynamics, okay? And then part of this was trapped under the aisle, so I will it, bring it forward, continue the fecal slowly, very little ultrasound being used, okay? So far, I still have not seen pictures yet. So I removed the nucleus already. Now I'm just peeling out the contacts. And this is dry. Now I put in some infusion, right? As in the bimenu mode. Bimenu is pretty good when you have contacts like this. You can access it 360 degrees. And then I'm just manipulating this into the sulcus, as I told you earlier. Don't down, okay? Because I've got a rib in the anterior capsule here. If I down, I can just dial it in, right? And it will drop to the back of the eye. So always just manipulate it by flexing the haptic. And you can see this case here, very early PCR, moderate nucleus, but you can still put a three-piece RL, you don't need to put anterior chamber lens, and the incision really is not ex expanded, okay? It's still 2.65. All right, let's have a look at this other one, where we don't use an RL, especially if you are starting and you're scared, you know, your RL will drop. You can use a sheet slide. So there's a PCR that developed here. As I said, I like to do a side port incision now. Okay, this is definitely moderately dense nucleus, and we're getting it out of the capsular bag. 
So it's like chopstick method, right? Two instruments, by manually levitate this, okay? Once you move it to the center, you levitate it. With the, uh, some of this collapse in between so that there's a space. Sheet slide is pretty broad, you don't need such a broad one. Okay, you trim it to about 3mm. So that's what I extend my position to 3mm. And my second instrument is trying to bring forward the sheet slide onto the iris. Okay, and then you have lower parameters because this position is a bit too wide for this Draco tip. And you need to have a fusion bottle up. And then you reduce your parameters for vacuum and for ultrasound, right? And you change your instrument from a chopper to Sinsky. And you can see that you can move all the nucleus. Okay, make sure you have enough viscoelastic. If there's a fragment trap behind, you can still manipulate that materially. Clear, clean up all the cortex. This is dry, IA, this aspiration. Just move all those fragments aside, trapped in the disco trap, and we put the RL into the anterior chamber now, over the iris, or if you go to the sulcus. Okay, just gently put it in, don't dial it, and then we can remove this last bit. Okay, so you can do a composite, right? First, the sheet slide, then you can use the RL as a scaffold. But these are all very, very useful techniques that you should learn how to use so that you don't leave anything. So, these eyes, you'll be amazed, they are really very, very quiet and they are clear and they can get 6 6 within the next day. Okay? As long as you don't think you're too close to the corner. Now, let's have a look at this one. So, this patient is a posterior polar. I already knew. Right, that he was a posterior polar because he had it uh, when he was earlier on and he refused surgery until it became like this. Alright? <coughs> so it's super hard, super thick, and we've just done the femto here. Remove the capsule, nice rexus in case I drop, <coughs> which I will, that's why I'm showing you in this top. So this is just visco under the capsule and I'm going to try and just gently crack a bit not over the center because the center is a polar opacity there but I already knew when I tilt that the whole thing started to tilt okay? so I've grabbed the whole nucleus <coughs> into the anterior chamber oh my goodness me this is even harder than before right now I don't know what has become of the posterior capsule you could do an extra capsular cataract extraction when you reach this stage, okay? But I don't know how to do ECCD after having not done it for so long. So the big, big nucleus, I said, okay, I'm going to put in the sheet slide and then go over it. Okay? It's an entire nucleus. I've not even taken out one fragment. Okay? So again, use a Sinsky, use lower parameters, especially the ultrasound. You need to make sure there's always some viscoelastic between the nucleus and the cornea and the cilium. Okay. And you see, I don't face my finger tip forward. In fact, if anything goes backwards, so that I don't push all the energy to the cornea and the cilium. Okay. That's probably the polar opacity that came out at the end. Again, you see no vitreous loss, yeah? No vicious loss, okay? It was early recognition. And then I can manage it so I don't have vicious loss. Then I can do this nice optic capture because I've got a perfect rexus that's well centered. And then you can just reverse the order, just take out any cortex that's residual there, but don't engage vicious, yeah? Okay? So you can manage even with the entire nuclear structure. But more commonly, you probably have it towards the end of surgery, when you have to manage this case, and you have, like in this case, another posterior polar, you're doing contact removal, and when you're doing contact removal, you think everything is fine, you're peeling towards the center, and then you begin to see a rib. Okay? 
it's okay as long as you don't engage with it. So when you do IA, you see I move it away, over intact posterior capsule, when I aspirate, yeah, I stay there and I aspirate. So if there's any surge, I don't catch the vitreous. Okay, so this I still got a tag material which is phase and again even with such a big rip you can round it off you can see you can just do a slight rounding you don't have to tear all along the way just pull right in this is a bit bigger than the other side but you just limit this extension there's adequate support you can put this into the capsule bag you see the way I'm doing it I'm not putting it to the bag because it'll be diving I just manipulate the haptic don't dial. Okay, with some haptics you can't dial. Alright. Okay, let's have a look at this other one. This is actually a, from the, uh, the OCT. Uh, in the clinic, I already knew this was a posterior polar that had a defect. You can see how huge it is. Okay, some posterior polars, when you do an anterior 7 OCT, you'll see it's gone right through. So I like to do femdo for all these cases because it allows me to do it without rotation you can see I just flip the nucleus I don't rotate it at all but look what we're going to see here I already know there's a big hole okay interior chamber maintainer okay aspiration you can do by manual if you Instruments I like to maintain maintainer because it gives me hands free. Okay, switch it around so you can access all the contacts. You put in the scholastic before you come out, and look, you have such a huge hole here. And because it was just contacts, we managed to prevent any vitreous loss. So any of these pre-existing posterior pores always have a huge defect. Okay, those that rip are those that rip just vertically, uh, just, just along, uh, right across the center uh, from equator to equator. Okay. If you look at this case, there's an extension of the PCR, so the question is why? Okay, so I start. It's a polar that, uh, let me try, I'm a bit lazy, I don't want to do IK. So I'm on the epinuclear mode. What's pretty? Is there a hole? So I think there's a hole there. This is another posterior polar. Okay. So just putting in this coat there, maybe it will just help me to peel off. But what happened? Okay, why? Can you tell me why? Why did this suddenly extend like this? Can anyone tell me? So why did it extend? Look, it's extending more.